Hello, my name is Roisin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So I'm not feeling too well today, so we are filming from my bed, um, but I'm going to do the best I can. Today's video is going to be 25 books that are on my radar, um, but unlike other videos that I do that are similar to this, these aren't books that are going to be released in the future. These are books that are already out um, that I have recently put on my imminent TBR because I've become intrigued by a new subgenre I guess it's kind of a genre um I'm not really sure what to call it so I know that like sad girl books have been a big thing um and they've been very popular over the past few years and um this is kind of sad girl ish but it's more it's kind of adjacent to that it's like sad girls weirder darker sister uh, books that are a bit weird a bit dark and a bit um unsettling I think is the vibe that we're going for um books that don't necessarily have much of a plot and if they do they don't go where you were expecting them to and hopefully you'll understand what I mean as we progress through the books as these are books that are um that I haven't read yet but I have seen recommended places I'm going to leave linked in the description some of the places where I have discovered these recommendations um if you'd like to go and check them out yourself and uh hear from people who've actually read these books these are in no particular order, but the first one on my list is The Seep by Chana Porter. Um, and this is about Matrina Goldberg Onecker, who is a 50 year old trans woman whose life is irre irreversibly altered in the wake of a gentle but nonetheless world changing invasion by an alien entity. Capitalism falls, hierarchies can, and barriers are broken down. If something can be imagined, it is possible. Trina and her wife Deba live bliss blissfully under the Seep's utopian influence until Deba begins to imagine what it might be like to be reborn as a baby, which will give her the chance at an even better life. Using Seep tech to make this dream a reality, Deba moves on to a new existence, leaving Trina devastated. Heartbroken and deep into an alcoholic binge, Trina follows a lost boy she encounters, embarking on an unexpected quest. In her attempt to save him from the Seep, she will confess, confront not only one of its most avid devotees, but the terrifying void that Deba has left behind. So this is a science fiction alien invasion story, which is entirely not my genre at all. Um, but I think it's going to be much more like people focused and ideas focused, which is more what I am interested in when I read books anyway. Um, and it does sound quite strange. And I think everyone I have heard talk about it says that it is pretty weird. Um, a unique alien invasion story that focuses on the human and the myriad ways we see and don't see our world which is exactly what I want and it's been and that quote was from Jeff Vandermeer who I know is someone who writes very weird books um so I think is a good endorsement the next one is The Dangers of Smoking in Bed by Mariana Enriquez and I have read a collection of short stories Things We Lost in the Fire I think by Mariana Enriquez when I was reading books by Latin American authors so I'll leave that video linked in the cards if you'd like to check it out um and so I know that I like her style and it's definitely this dark weird vibe that I'm going for and this one was shortlisted for the International Booker Prize last year. Uh, welcome to Buenos Aires, a city thrumming with murderous intentions and morbid desires where missing children come back from the dead and unearthed bones carry terrible curses. These brilliant unsettling tales of revenge, witchcraft, fetishes, disappearances and urban madness spill over with women and girls whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge. Women and girls whose dark inclinations will lead them over the edge is kind of the whole vibe um, of the books that I am talking about here. So it sounds absolutely perfect. I already know I like her writing and that it is that dark weirdness. Um, I was reading something about how Latin American magical realism has tended towards the darker and stranger um, and gone even more off the rails in recent years. Um, if I can find that article, I will again leave that linked down below as well. Um, so I think that Latin American writers might be where I should look for the weirdness that I am seeking. Another famous one that I know has divided readers is Piranesi by Susanna Clark. I know lots of people have loved it. I know other people have hated it um, because it is weird and nothing happens. Um, but again, the vibe of these, these books is with books where nothing happens, um, because that seems to be what I'm in the mood for at the moment. I'm very much a setting reader, and I think that the setting of Piranesi is going to be um, a very big, important part. I want to read books where the setting feels uh, tangible, um, and I think that that's going to be true of Piranesi, which won the Women's Prize last year. Piranesi lives in a house. Perhaps he always has. In his notebooks, day after day, he makes a clear and careful record of its wonders. The labyrinth of halls, the thousands upon thousands of statues, the tides which thunder up the staircases, the clouds which move in slow procession through the upper halls. On Tuesdays and Fridays, Piranesi sees his friend, the other. At other times, he brings tributes of food and water lilies to the dead. But mostly he is alone. Messages begin to appear, scratched out in chalk on the pavements. There is someone new in the house. But who are they and what do they want? 
are they a friend or do they bring destruction and madness as the other claims but yeah as i said a lot of people have felt varying different ways about this and i think that uh, most of these books that i'm talking about are quite divisive um so yeah i am not afraid of that next one with a cover that i love is mouthful of birds by samantha schweblin and this one was translated yeah this one was translated by megan mcdowell um and is uh, another collection of stories like the Mariana Enriquez. The crunch of a bird's wing, a cloud of butterflies so beautiful its mother's, a crimson flash of blood against an artist's canvas. Spine tingling and unexpected, unearthly and strange, the stories of mouthful of birds are impossible for, to forget. Samantha Schwebden's writing expertly blurs the line between the surreal and the everyday, pulling the reader into a world that is once nightmarish and beautiful, an exhilarating tour de force guaranteed to leave the pulse racing. The Grimm brothers and Franz Kafka pay a visit to Argentina in Samantha Schwebden's darkly humorous tales of people who have slipped through the cracks and fallen down holes into alternate realities. Absolutely everything that I'm reading there is making me really excited to read this book. It sounds exactly like what I want. Spine tingling and unexpected, unearthly and strange, um, <laughs> blurring the line between the surreal and the everyday, what once nightmarish and beautiful those are exactly the vibes that i'm looking for with these weird dark books by and about women not all of them on this list are by women and i don't know if they are all about women either um but definitely for the most part sorry people have been commenting that i need to slow down my speaking um in these videos and i find it very difficult because my natural speaking pace is that fast that is how I talk to everyone in my real life and so this feels very artificial and um, it doesn't feel natural to me at all but I will try my best. Next we have Scattered All Over the Earth by Yoko Tawada and this was translated by Margaret Mitsutani and it's another kind of speculative book but I think hopefully not too far on the speculative side. A mind-expanding cheerfully dystopian novel about friendship, difference and what it means to belong. Welcome to the not too distant future. Japan, having vanished into the sea, is now remembered as the land of sushi. Hiruko, a former citizen and climate refugee herself, has a job teaching immigrant children in Denmark with her invented language, Panska, Pan Scandinavian. Hiruko soon makes new friends to join her in her travels, searching for anyone who can still speak her mother tongue, Knut, a graduate student in linguistics who is fascinated by her Panska, Akash, an Indian man who lives as a woman wearing a red sarni, Nanook, an Eskimo from Greenland, first mistaken as another refugee from the land of Sushi, and Nora, who works at the Karl Marx house in Trier. All these characters take turns narrating chapters, which features an um, umami cooking competition, a dead whale, an ultra-nationalist named Breivik, Kakuzo robots, uranium, and an Andalusian bullfight. Sarah Baum says that Tawada Tawada writes beautifully about unbearable things and it's also magnificently strange. Um, it does sound quite weird um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that one is really like. Another thing that I have found that I am drawn to recently that I used to think I didn't like is kind of a detachment from the narrative as a detachment from the world. Um, I think I've been really drawn to that recently and it sounds like this book would have that feeling to it. Um, another one in translation, uh, which seems to be a theme here, is Paradise Rot by Jenny Farl, and this was translated by Marjam Idris. Jo is in a strange new country for university, and having a more peculiar time than most. In a house with no walls, shared with a woman who has no boundaries, she finds her strange homecoming to life in, in unimaginable ways. Joe's sensitivity and all her senses become increasingly heightened and fraught as the line between bodies and plants, dreaming and wakefulness, blur and mesh. Val creates a parallel world that's familiar but subtly skews. I think quiet horror is a very good description of what I am looking for in these books. I'm so excited for that. And that kind of blurring and uh, dreamlike quality and unsure being unsure as to what is real. Uh, those things are all intriguing me at the moment. Another one that I've heard mixed things about is Night Bitch by Rachel Yoda. Um, again, some people have really loved it, some people have not quite enjoyed it, um, but that is not putting me off. And in fact, I think this was on my anticipated releases before it came out, so I have known about this one for a while. One day, the mother was a mother, but then one night she was quiet, she was quite suddenly something else. At, full, at home full time with her two-year-old son, an artist finds she is struggling. She is lonely and exhausted. Her husband, always travelling for work, calls her from faraway hotel rooms. Quite suddenly, she starts gaining things, surprising things that happen one night when her, her child will not sleep. Sharper canines, strange new patches of hair, new appetites, new instincts, and from deep within herself, a new voice. 
Night Bitch is an outrageously original, joyfully subversive read that will make you want to howl in laughter and recognition. Now, a lot of books I've been noticing recently, ones that have been coming across my radar at least, have been dealing with motherhood and it's not necessarily a topic that I am particularly interested in or that I enjoy reading about a lot um, but I think it could be interesting in the way that it's sort of related to identity her grasp on sanity in this book um, so I'm a little more trepidatious about this one because I'm not sure about the, the dealings of motherhood um, particularly when it's just one woman when it's a woman de talk, dealing with becoming a mother and talking about her own mother I enjoy it more um, but yeah I think that this could still be very interesting Another one that was on my anticipated releases before it came out is Bestiary by Kay Ming Chan. One evening, mother tells daughter a story about a tiger spirit who lived in a woman's body. Her name was Hugu Po, and she hungered to eat children, especially their toes. Soon afterwards, daughter awakes with a tiger tail, and more mysterious events follow. Holes in the backyard spit up letters penned by her estranged grandmother. A visiting aunt leaves red on everything she touches. A ghost bird shimmers in an ancient bird cage. All the while, daughter is falling for a neighbourhood girl named Ben with mysterious stories of her own. As the two young lovers translate the grandmother's letter, daughter begins to understand that each woman in her family embodies an old Taiwanese myth and fears the power of the tiger spirit bristling within her to cause pain. She will have to bring her family's secrets to light in order to derail their destiny. I do love books that deal with folklore and mythology of um, any culture. Um, I find myself very much drawn to them, as long as they're not direct, direct retellings, I think. Um, at least the retellings of Greek myths I've read I don't like. Um, but I do like books that deal that have elements of um, mythology within them. So hopefully this one will be on the right side of the line for me. Next we have Come Join Our Disease by Sam Byers. Um, and this one has really bad reviews um, on uh, on the Waterstones website that I'm looking at but I know I have seen people on Bookstagram love it and the um, the bad reviews title is grotesque and unfulfilling which is precisely what I'm looking for I do not want to be fulfilled I want to be unsettled why be healthy when the world is so sick a darkly comic and profoundly affecting novel about resistance radicalism and redemption Byers mastery of tone and attentiveness to every psychological shift confirms him as one of the most accomplished novelists of his generation. Now that's so vague it doesn't tell you absolutely anything about the plot whatsoever um, so I am interested to see what it's actually about. Um, I only picked it because I know some people who like this sort of book and with whom I have some things in common um, in terms of literary taste have liked it um, so I put it on my list but I know I'm no more the wiser after reading that synopsis to you than I was before. Next one that I'm a little less sure about, purely because I don't like one of the covers, like I really don't like the cover and it looks um, like it's not going to be weird enough for this type of video, but um, I've heard, seen it recommended so I'm going to go for it. Um, and that is Beauty is a Wound by Eka Kurniawan, which was translated by Annie Tucker. Um, and this is a historical fiction book, which should be up my street I do read I have read in the past a lot of historical fiction but with this subgenre I have been leaning more contemporary so um, be interesting to see how it works in a historical setting. The beautiful Indo prostitute Dewi Ayu and her four daughters are beset by incest, murder, bestiality, rape, insanity, monstrosity and often and the often veg vengeful undead. Okay <laughs> so it might look commercial but that sounds like it's going to be exactly as dark as I want these books to be. One afternoon on a weekend in May, Dewi Ayu rose from her grave after being dead for 21 years. Drawing on local sources, folk tales, and the all-night shadow puppet plays, with their bawdy wit and epic scope inspired and inspired by Melville and Gogol, Kurinyawan's distinctive voice brings something luscious yet astringent to contemporary literature. Okay, so I was definitely fooled by the cover um, because that sounds absolutely fascinating and really perfect for me. Okay, another one that I am like on the fence about because I um, have heard people talk about this author, which is T. Kingfisher, and it's people who read books that I don't normally read, um, kind of more fantasy stuff. Um, but this book just sounded really intriguing. So hopefully it would be more my style. And this is What Moves the Dead. And this is a retelling of an Edgar Allan Poe classic, The Fall of the House of Usher. When Alex Easton, a retired soldier, receives word that their childhood friend Madeline Usher is dying, they race to the ancestral home of the Ushers in the remote countryside of Ruritania. What they find there is a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife surrounding a dark, pulsing lake. 
Madeline sleepwalks and speaks in strange voices at night, and her brother Roderick is consumed with a mysterious malady of nerves. Aided by the redoubtable British mycologist and a baffled American doctor, Alex must unravel the secrets of the House of Usher before it consumes them all. So that does sound a bit more plotty and a bit more of a horror story than um, some of the others on this list, um, but I am intrigued. Um, I love mushrooms <laughs> and the iconography of mushrooms, um, and I think that's what drew me to this the most. Uh, there are mushrooms all over the cup. Okay, one that has been long listed for the Booker Prize this year is Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Maddie Mortimer. But I have recently seen Kieran say that this was the worst book on the long list that he's read so far. Um, Katie Books, Kieran. And I am, um, well, Kieran hates everything, so I don't know if uh, that's really mm, should really put me off. Something gleeful and malevolent is moving in Leah's body learning her life from the inside out, a shapeshifter, a disaster tourist. It's travelling down the banks of her canals, it's spreading. When a sudden diagnosis upends Leah's world, the boundaries between her past and her present begin to collapse. Deeply buried secrets stir, stir away. As the voice prowling in Leah takes hold of her story and the landscape around becomes indistinguishable from the one begin within, Leah and her family are faced with some of the hardest questions of all. How can we move on from the events that have shaped us when our bodies harbour everything? And what does it mean to die with grace when you're simply not ready to let go? Not only has it been long listed for the Booker Prize, it's also been praised by Sarah Moss and Kieran Millwood Hargrave and Megan Hunter. Um, so a lot of people who wrote books that I either have read and loved or have been very intrigued by. Um, and it does sound like it would be exactly as dark as I want it to be. Another one this time that's been classified in humour, um, which I think is very interesting, is Liar Mouth by John Waters. A hilarious filthy tale of sex crime and family dysfunction there has definitely been some dark humor to some of the other books that i've read in this genre and i do think that i enjoy that marcia sprinkle suitcase thief scammer master of disguise dogs and children hate her her own family wants her dead she's smart she's desperate she's disturbed and she's on the run with a big chip on her shoulder they call her liar mouth until one insane man makes her tell the truth yeah, sounds very interesting. Um, I'm, I don't know very much about John Waters. I know he's a filmmaker, but um, I am more intrigued because I've seen reviews of the book than anything to do with him himself. One that I've definitely seen people like Jen Campbell and Kayla from Books and La La love is Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford, which I think is another short novel. I think a lot of these are quite short, whether they're short novels or collections of short stories. I think it's hard to sustain that dark surreality for a long time. Um, but it has been described as beautiful and terrifying, so definitely what I'm on the lookout for. In a house in a wood, Ada and her father live peacefully, tending to their garden and the wildlife in it. They are not human, though. Ada was made for her by her father from the ground, a unique patch of earth with birthing and healing properties. Though perhaps he didn't get her quite right. They spend their days healing the local human folk, who visit them, suspiciously, with their ailments. When Ada embarks on a relationship with a local man named Samson and is forced to choose between her old life and her father and a new one with her human lover, her decision will uproot the town and the ground itself forever. Odd and muscular enough to, revisit easy, to resist easy interpretation. Um, yeah, it sounds dark and wonderful. Another one that was on my anticipated releases is Diary of a Void by Emmy Yagi. Um, and, and this was translated by Lucy North and David Boyd. As the only woman in her office, Miss Shibata is expected to do all the menial tasks. One day she announces that she can't clear away her co-worker's dirty cups because she is pregnant and the smell nauseates her. The only thing is, she isn't pregnant. Pregnant Miss Shibata doesn't have to serve coffee to anyone. Pregnant Miss Shibata isn't forced to work overtime. Pregnant Miss Shibata can rest, watch TV, take long baths, and even join an aerobics class for expectant mothers. But she has a nine-month ruse to keep up. Before long, it becomes all-absorbing, absorbing, and with the help of towel-stuffed shirts and a diary app that tracks every stage of her pregnancy, the boundary between her lie and her life begins to dissolve. And yes, I think this one is very weird, and you have to expect the unexpected with it, um, which is for, from what I've heard from some of the reviews, um, and that's exactly what I want. Very, very weird. Now, I know there have been several books about women who fall in love with fishmen uh, recently, but the one that I've got on this list is Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls. Dorothy is a grieving housewife in the Californian suburbs. Her husband is unfaithful, but they are too ha unhappy to get a divorce. One day, she is doing chores when she hears a strange voice on the radio announcing that a grease-skinned sea monster has escaped from the Institute for Oceanographic Research. But little does she expect him to arrive in her kitchen. 
muscular, vegetarian, sexually magnetic, Larry the Frogman is a revelation, and that a passionate affair takes them on a journey beyond their wildest dreams. A subversive fairy tale, as magical today as it was four decades ago. So, in the 80s it was published. Um, and as again, it's been praised by Marlon James, Patricia Lockwood, Sarah Hall, Carmen Maria Mercado. Um, still outpaces, outweirds, and outromances anything today, um, which is exactly what I want. Outweird everything, please. Hello. Um, apologies for the change in clothes. I had a break because I was feeling sick and uh, forgot I was in the middle of filming and got dressed. So <laughs> you'll have to forgive me. Next on my list is Hurricane Girl by Marcy Jamansky, which has a really eye-catching cover. It came out earlier this year and it has already received so much praise. Alison Brody is 32 and newly arrived on the East Coast after just managing to flee her movie producer boyfriend. She has some money saved up from years of writing and waitressing, and so she spends it, buying a small house on the beach. But then a Category 3 hurricane makes landfall and scatters her home up and down the shore, leaving Alison adrift. Should she go home from the bar with the strange cameraman and stay in his guest room? Is that a glass vase he smashed on her skull? Can she wipe the blood from her eyes, get in the car and drive to her mother's? Does she really love the brain surgeon who saved her, or is she just using him for his swimming pool? And is it possible to ever truly heal without seeking some measure of revenge? A provocative novel that not walks the knife edge between comedy and horror. A novelist unafraid to explore the intersection of love, sex, violence and freedom, while celebrating the true joy that can be found in a great swim and a good turkey sandwich. The intersection of comedy and horror is one of the things that I'm looking for with these strange dark books. Like I said, dark humour is something that I do enjoy in literature. Um, so that is what drew me to this one. Uh, next is Francesca Manfredi's Empire of Dirt. Which was translated by Ekin Oklap. There has always been tension in the blind house where Valentina lives with her mother and her grandmother in the Italian countryside. Valentina's pious grandmother often hints at a family curse, while Valentina's mother scoffs at superstition. It's one of the battlegrounds on which they fight to control Valentina's upbringing. But in the summer of 96, when Valentina is 12, she gets her period for the first time, and the curse suddenly becomes frighteningly real. Blood leaks from the walls, the house and farm are overrun with frogs, the kitchen crawls with flies. Valentina is certain that she has brought catastrophe on the house and its inhabitants. So this sounds exactly like what I'm looking for. I told, I said earlier that I like um, books with generations of women. Um, I find those interactions and relationships to be really interesting when done well. And I also have been enjoying these darker coming of age novels. Uh, when they're told from the perspective of younger protagonists, I find it really compelling and engaging. And another one that was on my anticipated releases is Swan Folk by Kirsten Omarsdottir, who is an Icelandic writer, um, and this was translated by Vala Thoroj. It's another book with women turning into creatures, which, given, given my interest in Ovid's Metamorphoses, it's not really a surprise that that is something, their theme that I enjoy in books. In the not-too-distant future, a young spy named Elizabeth Ava is about to discover something that will upend her carefully controlled life. Elizabeth's work is the linchpin of her existence in the city. Her friends and social life centre around the special unit. But recently, Elizabeth has found herself taking long, solitary walks near the lake. One day, she sees two creatures emerging from the water, half human, half swan. She follows them through tangles of thickets into a strange new reality. Elizabeth's walk turn into regular visits to these swan women, who reveal to her the enigma of their secret resistance and their deepest desires. And it was shortlisted for the Icelandic Women's Prize for Literature. Um, so yeah, it sounds really interesting, definitely. Up My Street sounds like it gets dark and weird as it goes on, um, and I like books that get progressively weirder. Another one that I like the cover of is The Rabbit Hutch by Tess Gunty. This one's been praised by Jonathan Safran Foer, who is kind of a writer of weird dark books, actually. An online obituary writer, a young mother with a dark secret, a woman waging a solo campaign against rodents, neighbours separated only by the thin walls of a low-cost housing complex in the once bustling industrial centre of Vaca Vale, Indiana. Welcome to the Rabbit Hutch. Ethereally beautiful and formidably intelligent, Blondine shares her flat with three teenage boys. She neither likes nor understands. All, like her, now aged out of the state foster care system that has repeatedly failed them, all searching for meaning in their lives. Set over one sweltering week in July and culminating in a bizarre act of violence that finally changes everything, The Rabbit Hut is a savagely beautiful and bitingly funny snapshot of contemporary America, a gorgeous and provocative tale of loneliness, longing, entrapment. Definitely one that I've had my eye on for a while, and she's been described as a young writer of uncommon originality, um, so it sounds really intriguing. 
Another one that I've heard lots of people talk about is Drive Your Plough Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk. Um, and Olga Tokarczuk has won at the Man Booker International Prize in the past. Janina Dzejczko, an eccentric woman in her 60s, recounts the events surrounding the disappearance of her two dogs. She is reclusive, preferring the company of animals to people. She is unconventional, believing in the stars. And she is fond of the poetry of William Blake, who, from whose work the title of the book is taken. With members of, when members of a local hunting club are found murdered, Dzejczko becomes involved in the investigation. By no means a conventional crime story, this existential thriller offers thought-provoking ideas on the perceptions of madness, injustice against marginalised people, animal rights, the hypocrisy of traditional religion, belief in predestination, and caused a genuine political uproar in Tarzaj Cook's native Poland. Um, so, yeah, a really, really divisive book if it managed to cause an actual political uproar. Um, and I have definitely heard people loving this one, uh, so very much drawn to it. Another one I've heard lots of people rave about is Everyone in This Room Will Someday Be Dead by Emily Austin, which I think might be the most sad girl out of all of the books on the list list, the least like out there, um, but maybe that's what I'm just seeing from the cover, um, which reminds me of like Exciting Times by Nisha Dolan. Not that I've read that either, but from the way people talk about it, I don't think it goes quite as dark and weird as some of the books on this list. Although this has does say uh, darkly hilarious, darkly humorous, the perfect blend of macabre and funny. Um, so I guess dark is at once hilarious, tender, quirky and dark. Um, so three out, um, of the quotes on the book are set, use the word dark, so maybe I'm wrong. Meet Gilda. She cannot stop thinking about death. Desperate from relief from her anxious mind and alienated from her repressive family, she responds to a flyer for free therapy at a local church and finds herself abruptly hired to replace the deceased receptionist, Grace. It's not the most obvious job. She's queer and an atheist for starters. And so in between trying to learn mass, hiding her new maybe girlfriend and conducting an amateur investigation into Grace's death, Gilda must avoid revealing the truth of her mortifying existence. A crackling exploration of what it takes to stay afloat in a world where your exploration and the exploration of those you love is the only certainty. Another one by a writer that I know I like, um, who writes fairy tale adaptations and has dark humour in her work, so both things that I have talked about enjoying, is White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. I have read Oyeyemi's collection of short stories, um, the one with the keys and the flowers on the front. What is not yours is not yours. Um, but I haven't read any of her novels before, um, so I know I want to. High on the cliffs near Dover, the Silver family is reeling from the loss of Lily, mother of twins Elliot and Miranda, and beloved wife of Luke. Miranda misses her with peculiar intensity. Their mazy, capricious house belonged to their mother's ancestors, and to Miranda, newly attuned to spirits, newly hungry for chalk, it seems they have never left. Forcing apples to grow in winter, revealing and concealing secret flaws, the house is fiercely possessive of young Miranda. I, that sounds like a haunted house story, which is intriguing. Um, I definitely like books with creepy settings. And like I said before, I'm very much a setting reader um, and I need the setting to come alive in my books, which it sounds like it does in this one. Another book written from the perspective of a child is Old Lady Voice by Elisa Victoria. While her mother is in the hospital with a grave but unnamed illness, Marina spends the summer with her grandmother, waiting to hear whether she'll go to home or be bundled off, newly orphaned, to a convent school. There are no rules at grandma's, but that also means there are no easy ways to fend off the visions of sex and violence that torment and titillate the girl. Pre presenting an odd, unique and vivid take on the coming-of-age novel, Old Lady Voice reimagines childhood through the eyes of its one-of-a-kind, hilarious, perceptive, endearing narrator. Um, yeah, so very much not a plot-based book. There's no uh, real plot described in that synopsis anyway. Um, but coming of age, as I said, weird, dark, coming of age, death and sex um, are things that I have been intrigued by um, and enjoyed in books in the past. And the final book on my list is The Weight of Lost by Sally Oliver, which is one that has been described as daring, unsettling and original. And I think unsettling is exactly the vibe I want from these books. Again, intelligent, addicting and unsettling. So if multiple people are describing his book as unsettling, then I am adding it to my TBR at the moment. Marianne is still reeling from the death of her sister when she starts to exhibit some strange physical symptoms. Each day it seems her body betrays her a little more and no one can explain what is going on. Then a doctor offers her the hope of recovery, a stay in need, an experimental health retreat deep in the Welsh countryside. Surrounded by high walls and cut off from the outside world, it sounds like exactly what Marianne needs. Desperate to get her life back on track, she leaves everything behind. 
uh, hopeful that she'll finally has a chance to heal. Yet all is not as it seems at need. Yes, the surroundings are idyllic. Yes, the other residents are seem, hum, seem happy. But something doesn't feel right. Marianne begins to lose control as she obsessively revisits the days and weeks leading up to her sister's death. But now she must confront a more immediate threat, a dark experiment that seems to be taking over her mind, her body and her precious memories. I think you can see through a theme through some of these books has been, I don't know if you'd quite classify it as body horror, but um, metamorphosis, I suppose, strange changes within the body and a focus on the body. Um, it's definitely unsettling things relating to the body uh, are things that I'm interested in, have always been interested in, um, but definitely have been more drawn to of late. So there you have it, those are 25 books that have recently made their way onto my TBR because of my new interest in weird dark vibes only books. If you have any recommendations that you think would fit with this selection please do let me know in the comments down below, I would love to hear what you thought and add to my never ending theoretical TBR. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe, I try to put out new videos twice a week and so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching, <laughs> bye bye.